Top Med Talk. Well, hello, I'm Desiree Chapel with Top Med Talk coming to you again from the Intensive Care Society State of the Art meeting here in the heart of London at the QE2 Center. So um, we're getting ready to have lunch in just a little bit, but I have been able to get some four, four very special guests with me uh, today at the meeting. Now, they're kind of part of the exhibit area. Um, I think there are a couple lectures later on um, today, or maybe it was yesterday, um, regarding these special guests. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to um, two that are going to be talking to us um, specifically, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. So, Hillary, why don't you go ahead first? Hi, uh, my name is Hillary Burbage, okay. and I am one of the Pets as Therapy representatives. All right, pets as therapy. Sure. Huh? All right. So, um, and you guys have a booth here. There's right. a booth here with volunteers, mm-hmm. and we are meeting all the delegates today to talk about the um, benefits of pets working with patients in intensive care, and right across the health uh, industry, um, and the psychological benefits that pets in care can bring. We go and visit places. Some of them are places with people who are very terminally ill, very Mm -hmm. sadly ill, um, who perhaps are missing their pets and uh, need some respite from the intensity of care that they're getting. So we bring that to their door. Um, And some people we work with perhaps are not quite so unwell, but maybe they've been in hospital a long time or they've been in um, care for a long time and um, need some need some downtime, need some therapy, yeah. need to stroke a dog yeah. and tickle a dog. <laughs> Just and to get outside of yeah, their mind for a little get, bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, it, it, and not only that, but it also brings enormous benefit to the staff, to okay. the caring staff yeah. and the nurses and the doctors and all the people who are working so hard. It's a stressful environment or potentially stressful environment. Mm-hmm. And it's a way of um, allowing people to just uh, de-stress and chill. And yeah. uh, seeing a dog or seeing a pet... Um, come into the ward um, or into a caring environment um, lifts the mood Mm -hmm. and makes everybody feel a bit better for a few minutes in their day. Well, introduce your friend here. Sure. Okay. Well, this is Matlock. Uh, Uh Matlock is um, my boy. He is very chilled at the moment, fast asleep at my feet. (laughs) He's very fluffy and ginger. He's a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever, uh, four and a half years old, uh, born in Wales. And uh, so we live in North London and we have been working with children with additional needs. So pe- ch- young people and uh, babies with Down syndrome and a variety of learning difficulties um, and some children with um, sensory deprivation issues, um, perhaps who can't see or can't hear but can feel um, and to help relieve some of their anxieties yeah oh he's so beautiful we'll put some pictures up (laughs) these dogs it's fantastic not only does it lighten the mood for when you guys travel you know to the hospitals and things like that i think it's brought a whole new kind of um feeling to the meeting here yes <laughs> everybody's talking about the dogs smile, it doesn't does. it yeah yeah everybody yeah. is our booth has been bombarded with people who've come up to say hi to these lovely dogs oh yeah you just yeah. can't help yourself all right so we have another guest here yes hi um my name is pamela pearl um i'm here with frankie who is three and a half years old she's a standard schnauzer mm. and we have been volunteering at great ormond street hospital for children uh for just over a year and a half Oh, great. All right. I noticed her um, beautiful collar. <laughs> of course, that, that's her, her work attire. <laughs> I, I like it. You dress up for work. Most of us yeah. usually are in scrubs and everything else. I, I like it. brings a little fanciness to it. Yeah. She's a nice studded, uh, um, bright little jeweled collar. Yeah. That's great. Um, so tell us a little bit more about what your work is that you do there. So do you yeah. work with a specific group, just the children? So we, we go all over the hospital. Uh, we... We volunteer one afternoon a week um, at the hospital, and we we go everywhere. We um, get requests to go up to see specific patients. We go onto um, every ward. Um, if there is, aren't any infection issues during that week or a month or whatever, um, so that could be oncology, it could be intensive care, it could be a ward with cystic fibrosis sufferers, uh, we also go into x-ray oh. outpatients and, you know, Great Ormond Street at any one time has over 500 outpatients, I believe. Um, and, you know, that covering the whole spectrum. So um, the patients might be in wheelchairs, might be blind, might 
have a number of different conditions and we interact with them um, if they are if they express an interest to interact with Frankie then you know we of course make ourselves available most people do I think there's a level of um, of kind of getting patients who haven't or their families who haven't been around dogs previously there's a there's an education Mm -hmm. um, element to what we do um, you know and it really just the conversations just usually are about the dog start with the dog and then we sort of take it from there and you know I think most people have um, there's an inherent Mm -hmm. connection with with all animals I'm a big believer that they they have the potential to have a positive impact on on people's health be it physical emotional psychological um and um that's i guess the main reason why i do this is because i wanted to do something practical um for charity and having done lots of fundraising in the past and this was a way that i could do something with with my dog um and yeah yeah, that's what I was going to ask, kind of how you got into this. Mm-hmm. Why was this something that you chose to, chose yeah. to do? Well, it started from getting her, um, and we realized what a great personality she had. And because our kids are grown up, mm-hmm. I thought it would be a nice thing to, to get her to do something with, with children, and ha- the, hence us arriving at Great Ormond Street. Um, so the process with Pets as Therapy is that all dogs are assessed, and if they pass the assessment, which basically tests whether or not they are um, calm, mm-hmm. cool, collected, <laughs> for want of sort of better words, um, then and provided that they're you know healthy and all the rest of it, then it's a question of just I guess finding the right fit for you and your dog, based on the amount of time that you have at your disposal, um, the environment that you think your dog would feel most comfortable in, because every breed has got a slightly different sort of. Yeah, you know, some don't like pers- kids. Some uh, are may like yeah, yeah. and um, and so anyway, that could be schools, hospitals. It could be nursing homes. It could be, um, I mean, you know, offices. Even I mean, there's mm-hmm. a huge range. We we did something with university students. Um, I don't know about a year and a half ago, sort of before their final exams. Oh my gosh! So that's yeah. kind of an interesting way of also involving the animal. Um, And I've done some things. I've been in touch with a woman who heads up the nursing program at Middlesex University. And she was doing her PhD in the use of animal therapy as part of the the national curriculum, nursing curriculum. So in the UK, it's, I guess, embraced in possibly a bigger way than it is in other countries. I'm not so sure about how widespread the use of animals in therapy is internationally, but I yeah. think here it seems, there seems to be a, a growing trend. Yeah, I know in the U.S. Um, the hospital where I worked um, for ten years, they we had a dog, okay. um, and he kind of worked nine to five. Henry, and just the sweetest thing. Yeah. And you know, you, he walked around, and every it, immediately everyone, it's like a burst Stop of smiling. Yeah, yeah. Start smiling. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it just kind of lightens the mood. It just mm-hmm. brings something in that you just don't get when you're at work. And I love. I, I think it's absolutely fabulous for the patient. We'll talk about some of the benefits mm-hmm. that in just a second. But you're referring to the staff. I mean, part mm-hmm. of your day is that you know you're just having a really rough day, and you walk down the hall mm-hmm. and you see this cute little mm-hmm. puppy. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just the most it's a wonderful thing yeah. mm-hmm. um, ever. Hillary, tell us all a little bit about how you got involved uh, with very, this. Very, very similar, actually. Mm-hmm. Very similar. I wanted to, um, to, to, to pay something back. Um, I do a lot of work within my local church, mm-hmm. and, um, and they have a, a set up a, a special needs unit. Um, that works with the local community so it was through there that I started mm-hmm. and, um, and and the joy and the benefits I could yeah. see with families too um, yes, it's sure. the, the group that I've worked with is called WAVE and it's based in a, a church in North London and they do a tremendous amount of support with families with children with additional needs mm-hmm. so I offer part of a service with that they do all sorts of fantastic things with this family or families and um and so that's how I started. And it's really wonderful to be able to see that feedback and to see how, how it lifts the mood mm-hmm. and how children can interact with, mm. it, with, with the animal. Yeah. Um, and I'll, it makes all the difference. Oh, and, and I love the community aspect that you guys have talked mm. about, you know, and, but then taking it into the hospital and realizing there are benefits. Um, it's really interesting that you said that the nursing community is, mm. is kind of taking hold of this, mm-hmm. maybe um, first in, in the medical community. Um, what are some of the benefits, I guess, maybe that nursing sees? Um, um, you know, I mean, they've seen 
seen immediate maybe differences uh, with the patients? I mean, do you see differences in pain levels? Have there been any studies done? There's sci- there is scientific research, mm-hmm. actually, that, that proves in much the same way that walking in green fields and looking at blue mm-hmm. sky has been documented and got documented and discussed. It is the same approach with an animal and um, how your stress levels um, start to flo- to fall mm-hmm. the moment you start to interact with an animal. And, and there are all sorts of pets as therapy animals. There are cats, yeah. there are dogs, there oh. are all sorts. Guinea pig. I've guinea seen pig. guinea pigs, bunnies. There's also <laughs> a, a horse, I think, yeah. I believe. Oh, I did see that horse. Yeah. <laughs> Pain I, lovers. Yeah. Actually, um, the one person I know who's done a lot of work in this area and has validated research to support um, the the impact that animals have on, on human health is a, a lady called Jenny Phillips. So she is based at Middlesex University. And um, if anyone listening is interested, I'm sure that if you go to their website, you'll be able to find out more. Um, mm-hmm. But she heads up the, the nursing um, unit there. So, Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, so um, just for our listeners, can you tell us the best way to get, um, if they're interested in having pets into the hospital or wherever Mm -hmm. they are, the communities, um, obviously here in the UK, Mm -hmm. uh, what's the best way to to, um, get involved? Well, first, uh, get in contact and maybe get involved. Absolutely. Well, you can go online, you can go on Facebook, you can telephone um, the head office, speak to Pets as Therapy in your area, and there will be, I'm sure, a handful or a large, long list. Mm -hmm of volunteers with lovely well vetted animals that will be prepared to come in if they have time to come in and, and uh, come into your unit and and help in any yeah. way they can so yes that would be the first port of call okay great well ladies and gentlemen and <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so furry much. friends i know our furry Aww. friends that's right um yeah i can so do they have anything to say well i, I don't know me? matlock have you got anything to say <laughs> no oh, he's asleep they now. were barking yeah earlier. he was talking earlier well yeah. if i suggest chicken he might no oh, no he's no. asleep no. <laughs> that is so <laughs> funny well, we'll try and get a comment from them later uh, yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> well um i just thank you so much for You're sitting welcome. down this is thank again you. such a unique uh, perspective to the meeting here. I'm so glad that you guys could uh, join us. Oh, no, he's waiting. Are you going to say hello? No? No, No, he's had enough now. Yeah, Well, thank you so much. It's been great to speak to you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for downloading and listening to Top Med Talk. Don't forget to find us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even got our own YouTube channel. Whichever your favourite social media feed is, we're bound to be there. Find us. Also, subscribe to this podcast so that you never miss an episode. And make sure you go to the Top Med Talk website, topmedtalk.com, and get on board with the email updates. Oh, whilst you're at it as well, I suggest you download our entire back catalogue. We're categorising at the moment. We're having a little look through it. It may not always be in the form that you currently find it. So if you get your hard drive ready for a full-on download via the website, perhaps, or perhaps through your podcatcher. Oh, and if you fancy meeting us, why not go to the website ebpom.org forward slash meetings. Our next big event is EBPOM USA, the Dallas Masters course, a perioperative care practicum. Have a look for details of that and some of the other meetings coming up across the next year. EBPOM.org forward slash meetings.